So um, still we can we can thank the Lord and uh, we can praise the Lord because He is sovereign. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, before we start the message today, I want you to uh, open your Bibles in the Book of Exodus, chapter seventeen, before one, uh, verses one to seven. Now, uh, if you have your <clears throat> your iPad, your cell phone. Put it on the uh, NLT or the New Living Translation. Exodus 17 to 1 to 7. So we're going to read this and then be uh, observant in reading the, uh, the verses, okay? Nauna na yung ating title doon. So the title of the message, I'll mention it later or mention it today. Ngayon na. Bukal. I'll explain what is bukal. Sa Tagalog, bukal. In English, bukal. Bukal. But don't distort. It's bukal. Alright, let's let's read it. Um, at the Lord's command, the, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin and moved to the place to play, or from one place, uh, from place to place. Eventually, they camped at the uh, Rapidin, but there was no water there for the people to drink. So once more, the people complained against Moses, give us water to drink, they commanded. Quiet, Moses replied, why are you complaining against me and why are you testing the Lord? But tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. They did you bring, or why did you bring us out of Egypt? Why are you trying to kill us, our children, our, and our livestock with thirst? Then Moses cried to, out to the Lord, What should I do with these people? They're ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Walk out in front of the people. Take your stuff, the one you use when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. Then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock, as he was told, and water gushed out, as the elders look on. Verse 7, Moses named the place Massa, which means test and Meribah, which means arguing. Because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord here with us or, or not? All right, you ready? All right, let's have a historical insight of uh, the text that uh, we're going to, uh, to study. Now, in Exodus 1, uh, 17, 1 to 7, it is Moses' side of the story, okay? Who wrote Exodus is no other than Moses. So he recorded the events that he experienced. So he wrote it, and then here's the Exodus, and this is his story. This is the side of his story. In verse 5 said, The Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people. When you try to observe this, this is the style of writing that he is an omniscient. But it's not God. It's like the style of writing that uh, he is one of the, uh, the main character in the story. But then he's putting out himself to be able to write everything. That it seems that he knows everything. That an om omniscient type of, of writing, the style. So he included himself and in describing himself in, in the story, in his, in his story. That's why he said, the Lord said to Moses, but he is the one who wrote it. Walk in front of the people, take off your stuff, and then underline the words, the one you use when you struck the water of the Nile. Okay, you see that, brothers and sisters? Let me repeat that. Underline it. I underline it there. So the one you use when you struck, okay, the water of Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock of Mount Sinai. And then underline the word again. Is strike the rock and water will come gushing out. Then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock and as he was told. 
and water gushed out as the elders looked on. So that is Moses' side of the story. You know, when, when people tell about, about uh, quarreling or fights, when, you come, when they come to you, they will tell their own story, the side of their story, without tell, telling the other side of the story. Have you experienced this? Ibang, ito yung kwento eh, ako yung bida rito eh, but uh, you know, they would not tell what really happened. It's not actually the complete story. So what I'm telling you now is that this side, verse 1, uh, 7, to Exodus 17, it is just Moses' side of the story. But when you look at, at Numbers 21 to 13, this is another side of the story to make the story complete. What really happened, okay? So on the other side, I would say it's not complete. It's not that, uh, you know, what the Lord said, but it is something, you know, to do with the biases of Moses to make him like, uh, like innocent, free, you know, from guilt or whatever, from his conscience. So now in Numbers 21 to 3, which is later written by the same person, the same writer, which is Moses himself, if Exodus was written 1445 BC, this was written, Numbers was written 1405. So it is later, later than Exodus. Tapos niyon. So if that would be years ago, something will happen. Probably he will tell those, the whole story, the whole side of his, of his story. Now let's take, let's take a look. Numbers, look at your cell phone, look at your Bibles, you know, NLT. Numbers 21 to 13. And this is Moses, another side of the story. And this time, be an observant. Tignan yung maigi, you know? And then let's start. Verse 20. In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zin and camped at Kadesh. While they were there, Miriam died and was buried. There was no water for the people to drink at the place or at that place, so they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, If only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers. Why have you brought us, or why you brought the congregation of the Lord's people into this wilderness to die along with all our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? This land has no grain, no figs, no grapes, no pomegranates, and no water to drink. Verse 6, Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle where they fell face down on the ground. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, You and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, he speak to the, to the rock over there, and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did, as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gathered at the rock. Listen, you rebels! Strong word. He shouted, must, you, must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and he struck the rock twice with the staff and water gushed out. So the entire community and their livestock drank their fill. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people or of the people of, people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land I am giving them. This place was known as the waters of Meribah, which means arguing, because there the people of Israel argued with the Lord, and there he demonstrated his holiness among them. Is this a conflict against Exodus 17 or just another side of the story and this time it's complete? The image of God that was, was given in Exodus was an image of God that it's, it's the opposite. It is based on Moses' biases, how he sees God. When, when he wrote his track, he was mad and probably he's not listening. 
So what he heard is that you need to strike, you need to strike the, the, the rock instead of, instead of hearing is speak. So these are, you know, these are the observations that I have seen. First thing is that Miriam was included in the story and he was dead already. In the other story in Exodus, Miriam was not there. It was not mentioned. And then another side of the story, Aaron was present in numbers. But what was mentioned in the other in the other side of the story in Exodus is that there is just you know the elders, but never mentioned the specific name of one of the elders as Aaron. So in numbers, Aaron was there. And then verse 7 said, And the Lord said to Moses, You and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. And the people watch. He speak, underline the word, speak to the rock over there. And it will pour out its water. So, so when, when a person is mad, and then giving instruction, someone's giving instruction, do you think that he can hear what's the instruction? If you are mad, if you are, you know, emotionally been uh, controlled by your anger or paggalit na galit ka and then someone is explaining, you would not be able to, to hear that. Because Moses was upset with, with these people. He is ready to be stoned and he was mad and then the Lord spoke in, and then the Lord said, he speak to the rock, but he, he heard it, he struck the rock. And then he not strike it once, but strike it twice out of his anger. You see that? Have you, have you seen that, brothers and sisters? So you need to listen. You need to be, not be controlled by your emotion, not be controlled by our emotion. We need to listen carefully with God. Especially now in, nowadays that we are you know, experiencing pandemic, you know, disease or COVID-19. We are, we are in fear. Or probably we are not, or we, if you are in fear, like uh, fear is governing, you would not be able to hear the voice of God. That's why, you know, uh, instead of fear, it should be trust, like the song said. We believe in God, but the question is, do we put our trust in what we believe? You know, it's different when you just believe God. Because even the demons believe in God, but they shudder. Nanginginig pa yun, ano? Takot na takot yung mga demons. They believe in God, but they don't put their trust in God. The only thing that God has given us the opportunity to trust in Him, we, humans, that we can put our trust in what we believe. Putting our trust in God instead of fear, you know, will make us more happier and smiling in the midst of crisis. Amen? So you see what's going on? See what's going on? Now, let's continue, brothers and sisters. Now, this is what happened when, when he, he didn't listen to God. Instead of hearing he speak, not he struck. Because, you know, the first one is that, is that the one that you used to struck the water of the Nile. So he thought, Moses thought that he's going to strike the, the rock. But God said, you just speak to the rock, or probably just, you would say to the rock, oh, water, come, you know, can you give us, I mean, rock, can, we, can you give us water? Simple as that. Speak. Do not strike. And then this is what happened. This is the result of what they, they did. Verse 10. And he and Aaron, some of the people come together at the rock. Listen, rebels. They're still mad. You know, Moses is still mad. He shouted, must we bring you water from this rock? Very sarcastic, you know. You will see, you know. Parang, sige nga, sige nga, parang gano'n. Parang, you would, sige, susubo ko to sa iyo. Katakawan mo, parang gano'n. You know, in Tagalog, you know, if you're son, masyadong matakaw, you know. So that's, that's how it sounds, you know. That's how it sounds. Must we bring the water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand, and what happened? He struck the rock twice with his staff, or the staff, and water gushed out, and the entire community, you know, and their livestock drank their fill. 
So you see, from this, from this, uh, from this uh, experience, what is actually, you know, the the real the real uh, side of the story? Or is it in the Exodus or in Numbers? You know, when when a person is closely dying because you know it's getting older, he would tell the whole story instead of telling just with the one side of the story. I'm not telling that uh, Exodus is not a complete uh, story, you know. It's not, you know, the message is there, but it's, it's lacking something. And Moses tried his best to complete the story by telling, you know, what really, what really happened. So what happened is that the Lord said in verse 12 to Moses, Because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel. This is the consequences. You will not lead them into the land I am giving them. They lost their leadership because they didn't trust the Lord. And then what happened in this, this place was known as the waters of Meribah. So don't name your child as Mary Ba. Mary Ba. No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> just arguing. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the message. That is only just the instruction, you know. Because out of this, when Moses is struck the rock twice, what happened is that water cast out. Lumabas yung tubig. And I called it in Tagalog as bukal. That's the very start of the bukal. In English, the springs. Or the spring of water. Coming out from the rock, Pastor Pat, it's magic, but it's more than magic. It's a miracle. Can you see that, brothers and sisters? Water is coming out from the rock, and it's it is and it's spring, and it is continuous. It is not ending, and it waters all the plants. And what happened is that this. This place was in the desert. That's why they are thirsty. No livestock will live. No plants will live without the water. It is impossible to get water in the desert. But out of this rock came out the fresh water, the spring. Water, you know, the plants, the livestock. You know, do you think that it's just they're just thirsty? They're also hungry. Gutom sila because there's no plants to, to harvest. There's no food to eat. There's no fruits. There's no trees because it's a dry land. But then when the water began springing out, they start doing their, their planting. Grew. They feed the whole community. And they were filled and satisfied. The whole community and their livestock drunk and they were filled amen so the bukal the spring of water i remember when i was in the philippines uh, when we when we uh, moved from manila to pangasinan which is that was 1979 or 80 and then uh, the first time that i saw a bukal it's uh, on the other side of the road uh, going down and it's it's a river, but it, there's a uh, ubog in Tagalog, uh, in in Ilocano ubog, but it's bukal. We call it Tagalog bukal. First time to see a a, a a spring of water coming out, and it's not it's not it's not drying, it's continuous. And I think until now it's still, lum meron pa rin, no? it's still the bukal. That's why in other place in Pangasinan they build up a, a spring resort. And when we came here in, in Florida, I was surprised because, you know, the bukal is not just a small hole, you know, but it's, it's a big one coming out from, from the ground. It's a spring of water, fresh. You can drink from it. You know? And it's, it's cool. It, it's, it's refreshing. A mystery that when you touch the, the, the spring, Pastor Pat, I mean the water, it's cold. But when you dive in it, it's no longer cold. 
Parang ganun, cold pa rin. <laughs> Still cold. Abukal, you know? Now, this is my observation. My observation in the text. Verse, um, in Exodus and in Numbers. Number one, they came from wilderness of sin. You know, when, 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 you, when you come from the wilderness of sin, what does it mean? Is there, is there a place, there's a wilderness of sin, what you go there, that it's a wilderness of sin? <laughs> what is that? When you say wilderness of sin, it means that it's not coming from the outside, it's coming from within, coming from their hearts. Now, Paul mentioned in Corinthians that they were filled with sin in their hearts. They practice idolatry. They practice immorality in their community, in their place, in their homes, in their tents. It's a wilderness of sin. That's how they describe it. And not only that they are, you know, they came from the wilderness of sin. They came, uh, they said, is it coming out or they repent, something like that. And probably they, they confess or... I don't know what really happened in this one, but you know where they came from called as the wilderness of sin. And now the place they stayed had no water. Thirdly, there is a strong thirst in the community. So out of the wilderness of sin, there's a strong thirst in the community. What do you think is this thirst? Is, it, is this just for the physical thirst? Or it's more than the physical thirst or the spiritual thirst? Now the people began to complain because they are thirsty. And then Moses called upon God. God gave them instruction. And according to Moses in Exodus, you strike. But according to Numbers, you speak to the rock and water will come out. And then Moses strike it twice. So they were, you know, they lost their, their leadership. Now, this is my observation on this in this part, the observation insight. Probably God will speak also to you, and I will challenge you, go back to the scripture, go back to this text, and, and try to look at, you know, carefully the verses. And you will see, you know, we will see what the Holy Spirit is telling, telling you. This is what I experienced, and probably you would have more experiences, you know, or God will speak to you through this text. Now, let's go to the redemption insight, because our theme is all about the redemption, you know. The redemption insight. What is, what, what is my redemption insight on this, uh, on this study? Now, the first thing is that the shadow of the coming Savior. It is a clear message that what happened in that story is just but a shadow of the real thing which is which is the message is that about the living water and the rock and then who is this rock it is jesus who is this living water it is it is jesus it is a prophetic message for the redemption of humanity it is not the redemption of the israelite nation but it is the redemption of the humanity jesus is the rock because he was a strike. When you look at it, you know the story. Jesus Christ was crucified. And Jesus is the living water. And whoever comes to him will what? Will never be thirsty again. Remember the, uh, the encounter with the Samaritan woman? You know, defiling the rules of the uh, Pharisaic law. Came, he came there and then spoke with the Samaritan woman. And then, can you give me water? You know, if you drink, you know, the water that I will give you, and you will never get thirsty again. And he's talking, talking to this Samaritan about him as the Messiah. Whoever comes to him will never be thirsty again. Now, water is one of our major necessities. Amen? Major, yeah. Who can live without water? I don't think, uh, you know, 
we will survive without water. One of the major necessities. What is used for? Used for drinking, used for washing dishes, clothes, you know, watering the plants, showering, bathing, and everything. And almost of all of our activities every day include water. Amen? Now, what is actually the complaint? What is the source? Ano yung hugot ng complaint ng mga Israelites? Is it just for the water that they're thirsty? You know, in every complaint, there is a source, something inside, the deeper cause of it. And what is, what is that? It is all about fear. And this fear, fear for what? The thirst, which is physical. They're going to starve. They're going to what? They, they, would, be, they would become weak. But the major thing, you know, of fear is because they know that they will what? They will die. The pandemic today have a threat globally that you're going to die. Are you not afraid to die? Who is that? Are you afraid to die? Honestly, yes. But, <laughs> there is a but there. That's why we put our trust in Him. Because He promised, that, promised us that if you are with Him, even though you die, you will live. Just imagine the words of the Lord in advance. Just imagine that, brothers and sisters, in advance. Because He knew that someday or in our lives, we will what? Experience fear. And the major cause of this fear is that the fear of what? Of death. Impossible walang taong takot mamatay. All of us, takot mamatay. <laughs> Why there's, they want to stop the pandemic? Because they want everybody to what? To live and extend, extend the life. But who knows? If there's pandemic or no pandemic, eventually we will all die. Especially that if you want to live now because you're enjoying your life. No, Lord, I don't want to die now because I am still enjoying my life. But it will come a time. If you will come a time that you will realize that all your batchmates, all your classmates have already passed away, all your, all your neighbors, your family members passed away, and you are left alone, and then you would say, Oh, who are they, Lord? May I die? <laughs> and I was surprised to hear people, older people, that they would say they are praying to die. What? <laughs> I'm praying to live longer, but praying to die. Why? Because of this experience. The good thing in us as Christians is that we have the assurance that if we die, we will live. Actually, we will not die. We will just leave the flesh, this body, and then exchange this for a better one. Because what? We put our trust in Him. So what do we fear all about? Ano? But we're tatakot. Well, tatakot tayo, but it doesn't mean that we will not use God's wisdom to prevent and to, to make us safe. You know, the Lord said, do not put the Lord in, in test. Like, you know, it's a temptation, the temptation of Jesus. Remember that, that uh, Satan, you know, uh, oh, if you would, uh, uh, if you will fall, let yourself fall in this way, and then the angels will come and then save you. That is testing God. And what Jesus said, do not test the Lord your God. See, meaning that we also use our wisdom to protect others and protect ourselves. But the good thing is that we know that even though we die, we will, we will live. It cannot rob us from the joy that we have in Jesus. 
cannot rob us from the peace that God has given us. Why become anxious? Why became, become, uh, you know, worried about what's going on? Fear, you know, is the cause why they complained. So do not let ourselves complain <laughs> to God why you are not doing anything, you know, to to cure these people and to, to destroy this, this virus. And then the next one is that the message is that the living water, where it's in the practical way, it is meeting the, the physical thirst. When it comes to the spiritual way, it is also meeting the spiritual thirst. So physical thirst and the spiritual thirst, physical thirst is temporary. We will be thirsty again. But when it comes to spiritual thirst, which has been given to us, you know, drinking the living water, it is eternal and never get thirsty again. What is my theological insight, Pastor Pat? My theological insight is that Mount Sinai, the rock there, is Jesus. It is his shadow. Moses strike, which is man, will crucify Jesus. Water flows, which is Jesus is the Savior. And what happened is that sin separates us from God. And Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, the only mediator, the living water. You know, in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 13... You can just take a note on this one. Is that, like I said, that people were in sin of wilderness. God is not pleased with most of them. Bodies were scattered in wilderness. Indulgement in sin, 23,000 died. And some of them, according to, according to Paul, that died, you know, was killed by snakes in the wilderness. The number six is that six is that sin brings death, which is physical and spiritual. The Mount Horeb is the hum, the mountain of God's presence. Water flows in, in there. In other words, I'm telling you this that this theological insight, there's only one simple message of this, is that Jesus is our Savior. Jesus came ascended to heaven and will return when he said that i will the lord will come when he said about the numbers of the thousand years representation of a long period of time that we're gonna wait just be patient the time will come that i will return and then your mind your heart is ready don't you know that uh, honestly i'm i cannot Imagine, and I cannot, you know, realize that this pandemic is global. What I see before is just in the movie, Pastor Pat. The effect is that many zombies appeared, and everybody's in, you know, in uh, what, what do you call that? In uh, the last days, uh, there's a term there. They use uh, apocalypse, apocalyptic. Uh, stage you know it's scary uh, I, I thought it's just in the movie but it's 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 happening in reality can't believe it you can contain it from one person to another person another person and then next week the Korean church will not meet in here for two weeks and pastor Pat will speak later you know he will tell us uh, about what what we will we do next time, you know. Can't believe it. A clear message that the reality, the existence of God is true. And then what Jesus said is true. And God is preparing us for this event that will come on his return. You know, we just hear it, we just hear it, we just uh, you know read it about his return. But are we prepared mentally? emotionally we just can imagine it you know and like iniisip lang natin pero totoo pala 
So what will happen to us if we are not ready, we don't anticipate the return of Christ? We would be surprised, we would be shocked, we'd be, uh, we, will, we would be running back and forth. But God is telling us that we are in the last days, it will come to pass, you know, it will happen. Make yourself ready. We should every day, you know, anticipate the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the question is, what if the Lord comes today? Are you ready? Are you coming with the Lord? Are you, I mean, uh, in peace that, oh Lord, I'm ready. Thank you. Are you saved? Can you tell that, do you have assurance that you are saved? If you die today, do you know where to go? Or if you know that you were going to heaven, but then Jesus said, in heaven, the gate of heaven, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Do you know what to say to God? Why, when he asks you, what I, why I will let you inside my heaven, my kingdom? What would we say? Do you know, do we know what to tell Jesus? Now, if you are not sure about your salvation, I want you to put your trust in Him. Accept His gift. Receive Him as your Lord and Savior. And then keep on trusting the Lord for your salvation. And then work out your salvation. Show good deeds everywhere to anybody. Because they will know by our deeds that we are saved. And we have the assurance of salvation. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this time of crisis that you're still there. Never leave us, Lord God, and thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your message today, Lord God. Bless us and cover us, Lord, with your blood that we will continue to testify and witness about the truth which is our Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you. Bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 for I will restore health to you 